Hey guys, and welcome to Art of Navades. Today I want to discuss the Portable Eyelash Receiver, or PIR. Now, the PIR has got to be the most important piece of test equipment in Navades maintenance, so that's why I wanted to discuss some of the basic setup and operation of it, as well as some of the advanced features such as the special functions. So with that, let's get started. Okay, this is everything we need for our Portable Eyelash Receiver. And I want to point out that we're utilizing the Talus Model 7010 PIR today. This here in the antenna kit is our monopole with the quarter inch camera mount that was threaded onto the base of the PIR so that we can carry it around when we're doing our ground checks. We've got our localizer antenna kit and notice that it's got the longer dipoles, that's how you know that's for the localizer, and the short ones of course for the glide slope. And that's all the function of the carrier frequency. Uh, we've also got our charger in here. A uh, small little BNC jumper cable so that we can connect these antennas to the localizer or glide slope input port on the PIR. And then as far as our adapters go, I've got a 20 dB attenuator, an audio plug, and an RF sniffer. Okay, now just to demonstrate what dipoles go to what mast, I'm showing you the localizer. Uh, these are the localizer dipoles on the taller mast and then the glide slope, which is the shorter mast and also the shorter antennas connected to it. Okay, I've got a BNC test cable plugged into the localizer input of the PIR. So let's pretend that we're about to go out into the near field of a localizer and take near field ground check readings. So the first thing I'd want to do is select mode. And two main categories within the PIR menu system, and that's the mode and the function. So above here in the mode is the different systems that we can measure, that's localizer, glide slope, marker beacon, and VOR. So with localizer flashing, that's what we're selected, and I'm gonna hit mode again. Now I'm gonna hit function, and we're gonna bring up the different functions of the PIR to, on a localizer, which are DDM, or difference in depth of modulation, SDM, which is sum of depth of modulation, and then modulations, uh, channel, and some of the other ones we don't really get into, uh, except for level. Next, we need to change our channel or our station assigned frequency if it's not set correctly. So let's say I wanted to adjust it to 110.1 megahertz. Uh, I'd go ahead and then arrow down, or you can arrow to the left and right, and then hit function again. So for ground checks, all we're going to use is DDM, or difference in depth of modulation. And this is just looking at the modulation of the 90 and 150 hertz tones of a localizer. So I hit function again to select DDM, and you notice I've got an RF low, that's because I've got nothing connected, I'm here in a training room. But I'm gonna go ahead in just a moment, hook up to the localizer transmitter behind me, and hook up to the through line watt meter body utilizing the RF sniffer. Okay, so I'm standing here in my localizer transmitting cabinet, and I've got my watt element removed from the course CSB through line, because let's say for this instance, I've replaced the transmitter, um, a course amplifier, let's say and I need to check out my modulations now. Okay, so I'm removing the core CSB watt element and connecting the RF sniffer, which again is connected to the localizer up here. And the RF sniffer is in, and now I can get a reading on the PIR for difference in depth of modulation. So for this course amplifier at the through line watt meter, we're registering a one in the 150 on difference in depth of modulation. And that might be my facility reference uh, in this example. Okay, now we're ready to look at SDM, or sum of depth of modulation. So I just hit function, arrow down, hit function again, and I'm showing a 40.03% sum of depth of modulation. And again, that's the depth of modulation for both 90 and 150 hertz tones. Okay, that covers the basics of using a PIR at the transmitter with the RF sniffer at the through line watt meter body. Let's cut to a scene now of me using the PIR out in the near field with the antenna kit. Now we're heading to the two degree, and as we approach the center line, the numbers are gonna start going down closer to zero. Two degrees is one six five, and on our half width here, just hold real quick there. Just gonna double check it real quick. Maybe check the five. Half width on the half width. Five is. Our half.
half width on the 150 side is a 155. 155. Moving to the one degree. What's that? You're breaking out, man. What's that? Measuring in 85 on the 150. Line I'm call that. And for center line, we're reading a one in the 150. One in the 150. Center line. One in the 150. Bouncing zero. Okay, now that we've discussed what I feel like are all the basic functions of a PIR for the ILS system, let's go ahead and discuss some of the special functions and also how to replace that battery. And I'm bringing up the battery because I feel like it's one of the most neglected things with the PIR. There's nothing worse than having a battery that you've charged up all night but still only lasts for about 10 minutes. And that's just because it's been cycled, uh, it's been charged and discharged too many times. Okay, now we're going to discuss some of the special functions that are available in the PIR. And I wanted to show you first off the back of the lid. You've got a quick reference guide to some of them, but not all of them. So I don't use all the special functions, but I'm going to show you some of the ones that I use the most. And I'm going to start off with Special 11. LCD viewing angle. So if you have this PIR position high above you or low below you, you can change the viewing angle of the LCD display by just hitting special. And this is how you get into all special features. Special 11 and then set. And that right now is set for zero. So if I did something like a negative value, say 40, maybe 50, it disappears there. But if you turned it up, you would see it from that point of view. Just put it back to zero. And then hit uh, special. Another special function is special 16. And this is the receiver averaging. The default is 32. And so I like to set it a little bit lower than 32, around 30. If you go any higher than that, um, it's going to kick out a fourth digit and that can be kind of confusing to some people. And so I can increase it by using the up arrow, and the down arrow, and then the left and right for single digits. Uh, so I'll put in 42 and then hit uh, special and then you can see how you'll get four digits after the decimal place. Okay, so I'm going to take it back to special 16. 30, which is my preference, and special. Another one I've used on occasion is special 200, and this just shows you the input in AGC and then the attenuation block that's being used internally on the PIR. And this could be helpful for RF nulls if the uh, level function is not working well for you. So I would just hit special uh, 200. Set. And this is giving me the AGC voltage of 4.6 volts with utilizing the second attenuation block. And to get out of the mode, you just hit special, and that gets you out of that mode. Next is special 800 to show you the internal battery voltage. So I just hit special 800 set, and I've got a battery right now of 6.72 volts. And, and the shutoff or cutoff voltage is 6.3 for the PIR, so this PIR is due for charge. To get out of any mode, I'm just going to hit special. The last one I'm going to show you is special 900 or the calibration function. I'm going to need an external avionics NAVCOM test set, such as the IFR 4000. Um, I'm sure Roden Schwartz makes something as well similar. It has to be capable of outputting the localizer signal at uh, zero DDM. So I've got my avionics receiver set up to 110.1 megahertz at negative 47 dBm outputting a zero DDM signal. So now I can go ahead and plug that into the localizer input which I've already done and you can see I'm reading two in the 150 and I did this on purpose to show you the calibration process. So now I'm just going to hit special 900 and set. I'm just going to run through a self cal
And now after calibration, the DDM will read zero, the SDM will read 40%, and the RF level will read negative 47. Okay, let's open up this PIR to take a look at that battery. Okay, we can see that we've got our, our six cell NICAD battery here with the TALUS part numbers to order a new one. It's a 7.2 volt, 4500 milliamp hour battery. It's pretty simple to replace. We just remove these lugs from the terminals. You can see that it's uh, 7.2 ground and a center tap for 3.6 volts. You've got fuses in line with this battery and spares here, so if you can't power the thing on, it's always a good idea to just double check those. Uh, if you've charged your PIR battery for several hours and it still doesn't last more than maybe a half an hour, it's time to get a new battery. The NICAD battery has been charged and discharged too many times. You're never going to be able to charge it up enough. And that concludes everything I feel like you need to know to operate a portable ILS receiver. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe to be notified of other future videos. Thanks.